In this video, I am going to show you how to calculate compound interest in Google Sheets. So there's a few different ways that we can make this calculation. We can either set up the math formula ourselves using the compound interest formula, or we can use the FV function to make this calculation. And I'm going to show both ways in this video. So in this example, I have some variables set up that I'm going to use for my calculation. So I have the initial value of the investment or the initial principal, which is $2,000. And I have the interest rate of 4%. And this compounds annually, so once each year. And we're going to calculate the final value after five years. So the number of periods is five. So basically what I want to know is if I have a $2,000 investment that compounds annually at an interest rate of 4%, what is the final value after five years? So all we're really doing here is we have our initial investment. We have year one, two, three, four, five. And then if this has a 4% interest rate, it would be this times 1.04 and then after five years this is the value so instead of having to do all of the steps like this we can use one formula to make this calculation and this is the compound interest formula here so the final amount equals the initial principal times one plus the interest rate divided by the number of compounding periods each year to the power of the number of compounding periods each year times the number of years. So if you've never seen this formula before, it seems a lot more complicated than it really is, but it is actually really easy to set up. So what you want to do in Google Sheets is first lay out your variables. So I have all my variables already entered into the sheet. And then what we're going to do is set up the formula. So equals and then the first part of the formula is the initial principle. So I have that in cell B1 and then times in quotation marks one plus the next part is the interest rate. So B2 and then divided by the number of compounding periods each year. And so that in my spreadsheet is B3 and then quotation marks, sorry, uh, my closing parentheses, uh, to the power of the next part of the formula is number of compounding periods each year. So that is B3 times the number of years. So this is B4 and I'm gonna put this in parentheses as well and then I will hit enter and you can see this is the same as this and it is just one formula to make our calculation so that would be calculating compound interest using the math formula now you can also use a function and the function we will be using is called the FV function and so I will show that here so this is the syntax of the function. The first parameter is rate, which is the interest rate. The second parameter is the number of periods. And then the next parameter is the payment amount, which we are only interested in calculating the final value. So this we will be setting to zero. So we won't really be using that. And then there is present value, which is the current value of the annuity. And then there is end of beginning, which controls whether payments are due at the end or the beginning of each period. And so it can be either a zero or a one. But again, this isn't really relevant for us since we are setting the payments to zero and we're only calculating the final value. So to use this function to calculate the compound interest, what we're going to do is set up our formula. So equals 
FV. And then I press tab on my keyboard to enter the formula. So the first parameter is the interest rate. And so that is in B2. And then next, it's number of periods. And so there's five periods. The next would be payment amount. Again, we're setting that to zero because we're only calculating final value. And then the next argument that we're going to do is the present value, which is B1 in my example, which is the $2,000. And then this argument is optional. It's not relevant for us, so I'm not going to put it in. And then I will press enter on my keyboard and you can see it's 2433.31, which is the same thing that we got with the other formula. So you will notice that this function returns uh, a negative number. If you want it to be positive, you can just put a minus sign before the function and it will turn to a positive. So that is two different ways to calculate compound interest. Now I have only shown calculating annual compounding interest in this video, but if you want to calculate monthly or yearly compounding, that would be um, just changing this, the compounding periods each year. So right now it's one because it compounds annually. If it compounds each month, there would be 12 compounding periods each year. If it compounds daily, there would be 365 compounding periods each year. So it's basically the same formula. You're just changing this according to whether you're doing annual, monthly, or daily compounding. So again, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching the video. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or content suggestions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer everyone.